Hey folks, this is Vint with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Soda Dungeon 2. This is a free-to-play game that you can find on Steam. This is the sequel to Soda Dungeon 1, and it is fairly similar in playstyle. So for those of you that have played Soda Dungeon 1, I'm just going to quickly go over some of the new content that you'll find with this sequel. First and foremost, there are custom AI patterns. So you can actually create behaviors for your party members using quote-unquote soda script. So you don't have to sort of look over their shoulders all the time. You can sort of pre-program them in different ways. Craft gear. Uh, you'll be able to craft new armor and weapons for your adventurers. You'll be gaining like rare materials and other resources that you need. And then you'll be able to craft things. And that's cool. You can also upgrade items as you play too. So there are a number of different options to go along with equipping your party. You can play while you're AFK, meaning that you earn these battle credits while you're away, and then you redeem them for loot when you come back. Um, so when you're not playing, you're still earning something. That's a nice step up. Building your home base, uh, you'll be able to construct various buildings, like a blacksmith forge. That's for the um, pre-mentioned being able to craft things and upgrade things. There's a wizard shop, an arena, other things like that. Um, and then there's always other things to do. So what is Soda Dungeon for those of you that have never played this game before? Well, it is an idle game where you start off with just the basic of adventurers. I think they're called Soda Junkies. And you throw them into this dungeon and they progress floor after floor after floor until they die off. And they're going to die off. That's just something you have to accept. This is just throw a team at this dungeon, let them die, and then the resources that they've gained and the money that they've gained, they come back, and then you upgrade your village in various ways. So, for example, there's this tavern, this bar, that you'll initially get. And, like I said, all you've got are these soda junkies. They're shirtless. They've just got underwear on. They're very weak. Um, but over time, you earn enough money to start buying something called sodas. Sodas attract other classes to the game, like uh, the carpenter, for example. Uh, there's a minor class, a nurse class, a thief, huntress, dark mage. And then later down the line, for a lot of money, there's like a blacksmith character, tavern owner, the wizard, and so on. So you'll be spending money to unlock new classes, and that'll increase your chances of getting farther into your next run. Um, again, I did mention that your characters will level up over time, so as you continue using the Soda Junkies, they will level up and become even better. And that actually improves their stats slightly. So, you know, level 9 might give them plus 2 attack or whatever. Or even the ability to custom design their own skin or to change their skin or whatnot. So that's really cool. Um, you can even upgrade your tavern. So, for example, you might have um, these bar stools that you can buy. That'll increase the chance, uh, I think it's like 30% chance of attracting a new patron to hire. Um, in between every run, it'll attract like so many new patrons and that those patrons are your your classes or your characters that you're going to choose to bring with you to the next map so by improving your tavern you're you're growing the pool of characters available to pick between to go into your next run so in the beginning like you'll attract one or two people or three or whatever it is and then as you upgrade your tavern you'll have maybe 10 or 15 people waiting for you uh, for your next run. You can actually have your pick of the litter, you know what I mean? Some characters are better than others and, and the like. Um, there's also other upgrades to the tavern, like doubling doubling the speed of in-game battles, um, allowing you to um, save equipment preferences for a particular character class. Um, you can make HP uh, enemy HP permanently visible and different things like that. A number of upgrades within the tavern. You can even customize it with various looks, which is kind of cool. You've got, again, the blacksmith. I already touched on this, but you can, like, you can craft various items like swords and uh, armor. There's trinkets and gold bars. Like, you can actually smelt ores and the like for resources. You have to pay money, of course. You can sell um, off items that you're not using. You can liquidate, all that good stuff. Um, you can also build structures in this game. There's the blacksmith shop, wizard's hut, stables. There's even a mailbox. Um, there is a wizard's area. It has a portal on it. 
and that allows you to skip levels. So let's say that you're at level, you made it to level 40 or whatever in the dungeon, but you don't want to start at level 1 again. You can pay a premium to skip levels, uh, I think it's every 10 levels or something like that. Um, so you don't have to keep, you know, rehashing the same things that you're overpowered on. Um, there's even pets in this game, you can buy pets with your gold. And they will give you various passive bonuses. You, the, the game gives you a whale initially, and then you buy more from there. Um, then, when you've reached level 100, and you've beaten the boss, and you're, you've, you've unlocked a lot of stuff, you can then use like this little gateway to prestige, as it were, to the next dimension. That resets a lot of things. You get to keep some things, like the buildings that you've constructed and so on, but you have to rebuy your sodas and all that stuff to attract all the classes all over again. But um, that will give you access to relics and other upgrades that will help the next run become, you know, more easy. So Soda Dungeon 2 to recommend it. It's free to play, so I, I don't want to say no. I mean, it, it, it's, it's one of those games you got to try it if you like it, great. Uh, my only concern with it is that it's so similar to, like, yeah, there are some upgrades, but it's so similar to the first one that, you know, for people that have spent 10, 15, 20, or 100 hours even on the first one, uh, being asked to regrind everything all over again might mips, you know, some people off. So, I mean, that's my only concern, really. But as a game, like, there's a lot here. You'll get a lot of playtime out of it. There's a lot to do. Um, but it's an idle game. So, you know, watch Netflix or Hulu or something while this is on in the background and just enjoy leveling up everything. I mean, you know, if you, if you enjoy idle games, this one is a no-brainer. I think it has a lot of content for the free-to-play price tag. You know, I mean, there's, there's no contest there. But yeah, I do recommend it. The game is very well put together. It's fun to try out different classes and different combinations, equipping your characters with different items, seeing what run, see, seeing what configuration works best for the next run. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.